Hi everyone, it's Lauren and these are my favourite reads of 2016. Now these are not necessarily books that were published last year, but they were books that I just happened to read and happened to enjoy the most. <laughs> the first one that I have on my list is The Trouble With Women by Jackie Fleming, which is an absolutely delightful little book. It is an illustrated book all about uh, women, the way women were talked about in history and why a lot of women were erased from history. And um, it's just very funny, it's really witty and it talks about women who were um, very clever, very able, who we don't know about in school, but it just does everything with such a dry humour that it's just absolutely wonderful. So for example, we have here in 1896, a man called Baron de Coubertin revived the Olympic Games. You probably learned about him at school. He was a genius. He said it would be an abject sight watching women try to throw a ball, but that they looked more natural clapping. <laughs> then we have um, early women did not need education as they were feeble-minded. Female brains were not only smaller, but they were made of soft, spongy, light lightweight material so it's just very funny you've got these illustrations that go with it which just really make it and I laughed out loud like numerous times while reading this and keeping on that feminist vein one of my other absolute favorite reads this year was Girls Will Be Girls by Emma O'Toole this is about gender and the performance of gender and how all of us are socialized to live up to the expectations of our gender whether we're male or female um, and Emma O'Toole is a professor in performance studies so she really knows what she's talking about but she talks in such a colloquial real relatable manner she's very funny and it just means that these complex ideas are put forward in such a persuasive and easy to understand way and one of her broadest arguments is that we feel like we are choosing to do certain things so for example women might say oh I like putting on makeup that's why I put it on uh, but she's trying to unpick the reasons that we do these things and that actually society dictates a lot of our behavior another example is that she talks about body hair and how men are are not expected to shave their armpits or their legs and yet women are and how for a woman not to shave that's quite an extreme thing to do that's quite a stance you're taking to go outside um, with bare arms and and not have them shaved it's not just oh I didn't shave this morning because I didn't want to and it's just things like that which are so relatable and insightful in a way I just I love this book I think everyone should read it. I also have two short story collections on this list. The first of these is Multitudes by Lucy Caldwell. This is a collection of stories based in Belfast in the 80s and 90s and a lot of them focus on young people, uh, mostly girls, on the cusp of puberty or going into puberty, perhaps from the ages of about 11 up to 16. And what I liked about this collection is not just Lucy Caldwell's writing, which I really enjoyed in and of itself, but I think she really hits the nail on the head when it comes to being that age and feeling so awkward and the ever-changing boundaries of relationships and although all these stories are very different I think together they make a very coherent um, collection and it reads really well all together and the other collection that I really enjoyed and also does that is Sweet Home by Caris Bray. Now these stories are very much based on families but not just families it's also about the love and the heartbreak that comes with families so these stories are very very short um, and they range from very naturalistic to almost like dystopian uh, futures where the, one of them is this woman is going to a supermarket to buy babies and that's where you get babies from and you can choose which one you like. And a lot of these stories not only deal with the love of families but also the grief and heartache that can come with loss or the pain when a child has has an illness. Um, it's all in very different ways, each beautifully crafted on its own and each different enough that it doesn't feel like you're reading the same story over and over again. But again as a collection it just works so well and it feels like you're being hit with one message and Caris Bray's writing is also really beautiful really um, imaginative as well so I just I would very highly recommend this collection one book that I read very early on in the year but has absolutely stayed with me is The Woman Warrior by Maxine Hong Kingston this is almost a genre defying book it's sort of magical realism sort of fiction but also mostly autobiography of herself and her mother Maxine Hong Kingston is a first generation Chinese immigrant um, to the USA and she's unpicking her past and also her mother's past but the way she does this is to refer back to Chinese storytelling techniques. She um, talks about the tale of Fa Mulan and sort of Chinese superstitions and how that was mixed into her own life but she uses this magical realism element to her writing to make that part of her mother's history as well and it's done to an extent that you often can't tell fact from 
fiction, even when things do start to get very uh, magical. My next pick is something else a little bit different and a little bit genre defying, and that is Grief is the Thing with Feathers by Max Porter. This is a collection of poems, but it reads much more like a singular narrative than a lot of other poetry collections do. So I would really recommend this if you don't read very much poetry as I myself do not. This is about a family where the mother has died and the father and the two sons are coping with their grief and Crow is this manifestation of their grief which turns up at their house one day and says, I will be here until you no longer need me. So its poems are split from three different perspectives, dad, boys and Crow, and you see how they grow and change and how they get on with their lives. And this is based on Ted Hughes's collection of poems called Crow. But you don't need to have read that in order to read this. In fact, I read this before reading Crow, and I think, if anything, this prepared me more for Ted Hughes's poetry um, because it's just written, like I say, much more in a narrative sense. Um, so it's very easy to, to follow what's going on. It's just so beautiful, so heartbreaking. And again, just, just interesting because it's so different. We're now getting to probably my favourite two books of the whole year and the first one of these is The Tidal Zone by Sarah Moss. This is an absolutely breathtakingly beautiful book which is about a family. It's told from the father's perspective and their eldest daughter Miriam and um, one day at school her heart stops, she stops breathing and she collapses on the field and no one knows why and no one can tell them why. They take her to hospital and, and she's okay but it's about this family coming to terms with this awful event which didn't happen um, but it could have happened and no one can tell them why it happened so then they're worrying that it could happen again and it's very lyrical in the way that it's written. This is also juxtaposed with the father who is writing a history of Coventry Cathedral so he talks about the bombing of Coventry in Second World War and what I love about about this book is not just that Sarah Moss's writing is, is just gorgeous, but also the themes are linked together so interestingly and just so skillfully. One of the elements discussed is that sitting in this permanent state of fear or of emergency, but not being able to do anything about it and having to go on with your life. So this is kind of living with the fact that your daughter could just stop breathing at any moment and living with the fact that you might be bombed at any moment and it's this sort of dealing with emergency which is outside of your control um, and it's just just wonderful. And finally my other favourite book of the year which will come to no surprises to anybody who has read it I'm sure and that is Homegoing by Yar Jassy. This is a multi-generational examination of slavery and the echoes of slavery throughout our times. So we start with two sisters in what is now Ghana in the 18th century I think. One of them stays where she is and marries a local man and then the other one is sold into slavery in the US and each chapter is from a different character's perspective so we start with two quite long chapters at the beginning of the book from each of these sisters sides and then each chapter after that is about a new character a generation downwards so then we'll go with one of the women's sons and then the other woman's daughter and then the next chapter will be their grandchild and their grandchild and it goes down and down and down until we reach the modern day. I really enjoyed this because I really liked all of the different characters, I liked the variety, I really liked the long-term sort of wider view that this has um, about the effects of slavery and I think this is one of the best, um, very easy to follow, very clear representation of the atrocities of slavery and how they are still relevant today. So I would love to hear from you what your favourite reads have been of 2016. My watch later list on YouTube is huge at the moment just because everybody's doing their best of 2016 lists and I love it, I can't get enough of it, I'm just like watch later, watch later, watch later. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think my to be read wish list is going to get very very long and my purse is probably going to get very very small. <laughs> I'm also going to be doing a worst reads of 2016 uh, video which will be up shortly because you know, we've got, to, we've got to keep it real, we've got to have something to compare the best reads to. Um, and so I will see you next time. Bye!